Welcome. My name's Mads. That's Akipaki Teriyaki Coco Curry Turtle Soup McKay. Uh, they are the supervisor here on site. We are here to talk to you about self-tattooing. I like to talk about safe practices and uh, just sort of what I've learned along my like three-ish year journey in hand poke tattooing. I have been sharing my journey here online and I have not had a lot to share in the last year. So I'm here to update you because spoilers, I have finally put down a fresh tattoo on my leg and we're just gonna be uh, kind of going over what we've been doing lately. In general, I really like to emphasize sanitation first, just in case there's anybody observing these to glean knowledge to do this themselves. Had people call me out on the past about like going into this box without gloves on. It's not 100% sanitary, but I'm here to be honest with you guys. I do everything in my power to disinfect and keep things clean, but I'm also a human and this is my home and my cat lives here. So this is not a professional tattoo environment. Do not do this at home. But if you do, Aki wants you to know you need to clean at least as much as you see me do, if not more. Okay, or she'll She'll, she'll, I don't want to repeat this, she's making me say this, but she'll come and she'll find you and she'll claw your eyes out. It's really not nice, but she just... Infected tattoos are her pet peeve. Moving on, right now I'm cutting down some kebab sticks. I use these to attach the tattoo needle to to have a more comfortable grip. They uh, have to be cut down because otherwise they don't fit inside a sharps container. There are little devices I could use uh, to hold needles as well. But I find I, I have to replace my needles fairly regularly. They're not all of the highest quality. They go dull eventually. And I need to use different sizes anyways. So every once in a while I go through and I will clean everything. You should wipe everything with alcohol and wrap it with saran wrap when you are tattooing. I personally have been lucky in the dozens of times that I've tattooed at home. I have not had any infections. The only issue I had with my second tattoo I ever did was I went out and I got a sunburn on the tattoo the, the following week and I thought it got infected. It was really angry and it didn't heal right. And I even uh, talked about it in my next video uh, and said, don't use this ink, this ink's bad. I got it off Amazon, don't, don't buy ink off Amazon. And I was incorrect. The problem was, is when you have fresh black ink on your skin, the UV light from the sun gets absorbed into it and you burn much faster than you normally would. So, yeah. The last full tattoo I did on myself was my knee, I believe. My kneecap, my caw is a wheel. And then I did a Jinro frog on my partner uh, about six months ago. Other than that, I've sat down and I've touched up some tattoos and I have recorded those processes, but it really wouldn't have been an interesting video and I didn't glean anything new that I felt like I needed to share with like this little community. So I haven't really shared much. Uh, I had just been working. Uh, I was working like close to 40 hours a week. I really loved my job. It was really good, um, but I've a lot has changed, uh, especially my hair. So that's when I was editing this together, I'm like, I have all this cool footage from the last year of like my hair color changing. So I'm just going to like show off like the fun I've been having with that. Um, I, I haven't had time to tattoo and sit down and do my projects, but what I have done is invested in my own life. I've shared some videos with you guys that I got to spend some time in Japan and like cross a bunch of stuff off my bucket list, which was amazing. Apologies that those videos are completely out of left field. I will keep posting them, but I'm also going to keep posting tattoo stuff. And no, I will not separate the content. Sorry. It's just, this is my personal channel. You're watching my personal stuff that I do. Uh, but thank you for sticking around, those of you who did. Uh, I noticed a small hit in numbers when I started uploading like Disney content. Um, it won't be Disney centric, but it might be Japan centric from here on out. Still 50% tattoo focused though, I think. We'll see. Pardon my tangent. I uh, had green hair there, I liked it. Uh, and then I went to Japan and it got bleached by that terrible UV light we talked about and it turned blue. And I didn't want blue hair, I want green hair. You're watching a tattoo video, aren't you? So uh, this is fake skin and it's uh, good fake skin. And I wrote down what brand it was and I, 
I don't remember. It was not the cheapest fake skin I bought. It has some really cool skin-like texture to it that you can kind of see in the up close of the stencil. But the problem with fake skins, like I, I really suggest everybody practice tattooing before they do it on themselves. But A, you may be similar to me and have attention span issues and just doing this seems tedious. You, you really should do it, but it might be impossible. I get that. Um, the other problem is that I see a lot of people online complaining about fake skin is dry. And even though it has give, it doesn't suck in the moisture of the ink like skin does. So a lot of times you'll be poking fake skin over and over and over again and not feel like it's actually taking. I personally feel like I have to poke harder and I don't love the habits that I build using fake skin. Therefore, I have turned my left leg into a collection of fridge magnets, but that's okay. When I mentioned that I've been investing in myself with uh, the job that I had last year, here's one of the things, uh, thanks to a combination of my job and my audience here on YouTube and your guys' support, I was able to get myself a drawing tablet. Uh, the previous year I had been borrowing a old iPad and I was trying to use Procreate, but the program expected better hardware and I got really frustrated. I am not an Apple fanboy. I will never be an Apple fanboy. I, my last Apple product was like an iPod touch. And even though I know everybody loves Procreate and there's a few tools that I would prefer to have, uh, I stick with Adobe and their program Fresco at this point. I've spent a few months trying to learn how to draw with this. And it's a completely different beast. I feel like I'm learning how to draw for the first time. Uh, to make it more simple for myself, I'm taking my own flash and I'm trying to redraw it. I'm trying to get myself more solid lines, more uniformity, use the built-in grid pattern, but it loses what's special about it at times. So I spend a few hours of every week trying to learn how to both digitally paint and uh, experiment with vector art because another really cool thing I would like to learn how to make is stickers. At my last job, there was a really strong water bottle culture and there were so many people working there, you had to put stickers on your water bottle to know it was yours. And uh, I've been trying to design like stickers for that community and uh, just silly joke things as well. Like just stickers that I want to exist. I put stickers on all my water bottles. Speaking of which, this laptop looks really boring. We're gonna take a little bit of a break and go through my sticker collection and we're gonna find some new shiny things to put on it because life is short. Use the stickers, please. I have like five water bottles floating around all covered with stickers. Well, we've paid our cat tax as we must every 20 to 30 minutes depending on the cat nap. And uh, we move forward with redundancy, doing the same thing over and over again. This is basically my original process before I got the laptop. I'll flip a drawing upside down and redraw it in order to try to see any flaws in it. Now I'm gonna go and print it all out one more time and run it through my little brain system again. Rinse and repeat. Probably anywhere from eight to 12 times. I wish it didn't take me that long. I'm not a professional, being honest with you. I'm not the best at drawing. I just like to. What we also need to do besides design our tattoo flash is figure out how much space we have for the next tattoo. This is my method for mapping out my current space of uh, uh, tattoo leg sleeviness. I'm gonna attach it down to my leg and just trace it really quick so that we can use it to figure out the exact scale of the ideal tattoo. That way we don't have to like print it 14 times and waste a bunch of carbon paper. We're gonna come back to that uh, tracing paper in just a little bit, but now we are going to talk about today's tattoo. What we end up doing today is a reference to the anime Neon Genesis Evangelion. Hooray, everyone's favorite anime. I have wanted an Evangelion tattoo for a long time, thought about doing the Lilith mask, but uh, the spheres would fit really well in a part of my leg. So I just kind of have thought about it for about a year and decided to sit down and do it. What we're gonna do right now is figure out everybody who's done it correctly before. We look at a bunch of really bad tattoos first, see all the ways not to do this tattoo, 
And then we go forward with the tattoos we did like, what, what imagery did work. Obviously, I cannot replicate what a professional tattoo artist can do with shading, but I just kind of pick a few things and I print them out and use those as a reference as I uh, work on my own tattoos. There are also multiple spheres slash lances in this anime, and so I kind of had to decide which one I wanted. But then I kind of remembered I had a sketch in a, in a sketchbook from when I thought about this a year ago, and it was kind of my own mashup of all the different lances and I sort of end up going with that one but for now what I like to do is just compile all my favorites screen grab that paste it into paint like a professional computer user and then print that out as a reference here were my favorites credit where I could find the credit that's due sorry to the other artists moving on I uh wanted to make a little comment about making your own original art because it is not my place to pass judgment on other stick and poke people, but I feel like a solid 90% of the time when I see stick and poke online, it is art that people found on Google and thought was cool and they copied it directly and then they tattooed it on themselves. This is, this is the wild west of the internet and that's kind of the way it goes. For me personally, I've thought about taking like band logos directly and putting them on my leg and it just doesn't feel right. So everything I tattoo on myself I do my best to put it into my own hand, draw it in my own way. This was a really tough one because part of me wanted like a screen accurate, you know, Lance of Longinus that another anime nerd could see and be like, oh, I get what that is. But instead I sort of went with the design of a slightly more obscure spear from a newer movie. Anyway. I really want to encourage people to draw their own tattoos more, but there is an art form to it. You have to balance your contrasts. It has to be legible from, and it doesn't, it doesn't have to be anything. It's your own tattoo, but, but in a way like drawing tattoo flash is very difficult. When you're already trying to learn sanitation and good techniques and all these other factors to tattooing, like it's bonkers how much stuff a proper tattooist has to learn. Anyways, we need a break. Aki has something to say. Um, pardon me, if you if, if you could draw your attention over this way. Pardon, get in there. Come on, is it get, go. No, dog. Dog that way. Dog. 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 I apologize. There's a corgi in my life, and they're very cute. And like, I'm not a dog person, but when they show up, I have to show them off. And like, I don't know. It's a struggle for me. Okay, like. I don't wanna, I don't wanna be that person that's like, look, I have literally the, the cutest dog in the world, but I, I just, what do you expect me to do? Anyway, tattoos. Here's kind of the roughs that we uh, started out with and then what we looked like after putting it through the computer a few times. I like to do it in the final color, especially since I decided that this one's not gonna get outlined. It's gonna be relatively small. So we're printing out the black outline for the carbon paper's sake, but we're only gonna be poking this in solid red. So pay the cat tax. And then we're gonna move forward with this project. It has been a year and since I, uh, since I have done any tattoos for myself and I want to change that. So we are determined, ready. Everything, everything in the world is right. Nothing could possibly go wrong. I shall proceed as one does. I will start to clean my station and put down my, uh, my stencil and not get distracted by this very cute cat. It's difficult. Do you know how hard it is to like sanitize something and then have a cat? Yeah, it's not, not easy, but you know, it's worth it. It's worth the challenge. One of the hardest parts about tattooing and I've talked about this in other videos is the angle. Uh, I can't wait to finally finish kind of filling up this lower part of my leg because it's gonna be so nice to tattoo my thigh. I have not started on my thigh. It's gonna be so much easier. I do not have great flexibility in my hips. And so it's really hard for me to hold these positions. What I end up doing, by the way, is just doing a red line up the back of my leg. In case you ever try to do this, I had a really hard time putting the stencil down and just sort of freehanding what felt like that. Because your, your ankle kind of curves in to the center of your body. It's never really gonna be straight, but in order to get it uh, as comfortable as I was gonna be with it, I used that Sharpie to make a nice line. 
I then uh, set down a, a, a camera via my cell phone and I used that to make sure that those lines were nice and happy. Gotta make sure that everything looks straight because this is hopefully permanent if you do it correctly. Yeah. My station has been maintained, but every single time I sit down to tattoo, I get brand new fresh paper towels out of a fresh container and I wrap everything, wipe it all down with uh, rubbing alcohol. In this particular instance, I was ready to go. My stencil was dried. I did my final touches, which were like wiping down any surfaces that I may touch. You shouldn't touch your phone while you're tattooing, uh, but you might. And then I realized I didn't have red ink. I set up anyways, this was all ready to go, but the tattoo that I put that stencil down to do required red ink. And I knew I had red, that was orange by the way. I know it looked red, but it was orange. Uh, I knew I had red ink. And I must have finished it up, must have left it open and it dried. I don't, I don't know where it went. I looked everywhere for it. It's gone. The red ink's gone. Instead, what we did is we filled in an older tattoo that I started a little over a year ago. Uh, this is a Hephabee. It is for my first attraction that I learned how to work at Disneyland. And uh, it originally was going to be all orange. It's based off of one of the particular bees on the back of the, the vehicles. Um... And uh, it's, it's special, but it just needed color. It's been a really long time. So we just moved forward with that. I'm looking forward to seeing how it heals. We went out and got some red ink. It took a minute, but we came back and we started over. Went a lot faster the second time because I had this system in place. Same thing we did before, drew a red line up the back of my leg, put the other stencil down. I was gonna do that Lance of Loginous one. And then this time I grabbed the, um, the alternative design. Once again, set up my cell phone, check all those lines from all different angles, standing straight, standing at an angle, make sure I have all my supplies. Hooray! Yep, that's red, not orange, that one's red. So, set up one more time. Got all my nice little shiny ink caps ready. I'm really nervous to work so close towards the bottom of my foot. I, you know, I put down clean towels on the floor, I clean the bottom of my foot. I make sure I take a shower before I tattoo, but I'm always, I'm always so nervous, but this went pretty quickly. Ended up using three different needle sizes, mostly a three round liner, especially for that line at the bottom. Used a five round liner to do some of the base outline at the top of the sphere and the seven round shader to try to fill in. Because of this awkward angle on the back of my ankle, the shader was kind of hard to use. Um, I probably would have been okay with just a five round liner and it would have packed a lot faster. This went relatively quickly, but I had to stop early because it was ouchy. My hip was was like, ow. And and I, I would have liked to fill it in a little bit more, but let's come back to it in the morning and uh, do one of my nice little follow-ups and then I'll export and I'll send this video on its way. Hey guys, thank you so much for being here with me. I really appreciate it. Please be safe out there. Please have a wonderful 2024. I hope to talk to you guys again soon. Thanks, bye.